What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to create this follow and unfollow button for our Twitter clone app with Django and Python. Now guys, like I said in this video, we're going to create the follow and unfollow button for our Twitter clone. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, moving right along. Like I said, in this video, we're going to add this follow and unfollow button. So we can say, for instance, follow Bob or unfollow Bob. And when we do, it changes there, it changes everywhere. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django Twitter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Okay, so let's head over to our profile.html. And you'll notice when we go to our profile list, if we go to, for instance, John's profile, it goes to profile and then 12. John is user 12, right? If we go to April, it's profile and then 13. April is user 13. So profile is the page we need to edit because we want this button to appear on everybody's profile page, right? So that makes sense. So let's come down here towards the bottom. And in the last video, we added this little section that shows who's following who. And underneath that, like down here, let's add a line break real quick. And let's just say test. So let's make sure we're in the right spot here. So if we head over to the profile list or our own profile, we see test right there. So we're in the right spot. If we check somebody else's, yep, sure enough, there it is. So here, what we want to do is create a little web form that's kind of hidden from view, and it only shows like the submit button for that web form. So then whenever we click that button, it will submit a form, send information to the back end, and then we'll make a determination based on what we want to do with that information, whether we follow or unfollow April, for instance, right? So do that. Let's come down here and let's go form. And we want to say method equals post. We're going to post. And we don't need an action that if you leave the action off, it'll just post to the same page that it's on, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and close our form tag just to make sure we have that. Now with most web frameworks, you need a CSRF token. So let's go at CSRF underscore token. That's a cross site request forgery token. It's just a way to keep hackers from hijacking your form. So now we need to determine whether or not you already follow this person. So we need to do some logic here. So let's say if, and I'm gonna come down here and just right away end my if because I always forget to do that. So if, now you'll notice up here, we're passing profile. So we can say if profile, and if you don't remember what that is, we can look at our views.py file and come down here. And the profile is, remember, when we go to the web page, it's passing a number in up here. So for instance, three, April is number three. This three gets passed in right here to the view. And that's the primary key of three. And then we can look up that person right here with profile. So we can say profile.objects get user. And then this would be three, right? So that will grab April's profile and assign it to this profile variable that then gets passed down here back into the page. So when we say if profile, we're saying, hey, if April, right, in this particular case, on this particular page, if she is in the user, you, because you're logged in, dot profile, dot follows, dot all, well, that means you follow her. If she's in your follows, that means you follow her, right? So if that's the case, we want to unfollow her, him, whatever, right? else we want to follow, right? So this is what we're looking at here. If you're already following them and you click the button, you want to unfollow them. Otherwise, you're not already following them. And when you click the button, you want to follow them, right? Piece of cake. So here, how do we do this? Well, let's create a button. And this is just going to be a regular bootstrap button. So we can give it a class of BTN and then BTN dash outline dash danger. And this is just pure bootstrap. So uh, the outline will make our button outline as a solid. I just like the way that looks, so I'm doing it. You don't have to. You can leave that out if you want a solid button. And danger is the color red, right, in bootstrap land. So, okay, now we need to give this button a name, and I'm going to call the name follow. And then we also need to give this a value. So when we click this, we want to pass unfollow to the back end. Now, you could do anything. You 
you could put this as one or two or whatever. So just as long as you know what your what the value is supposed to mean. In this case, we want to unfollow a person, so we want to pass the word unfollow back. Then we'll run some logic based on that word, and you'll see how to do that in just a second. And then what kind of button is this? It's a type of submit, and that's it. Now we want this button to say unfollow, and then the the user, right? So let's go profile dot user dot username. And if we want to get cute with this, we could put a little at sign on there too. Whatever. How uh, that'll work. And then we close our button tag. So we could kind of smush this around to make it look a little easier to read. And there we go. So else, I'm just going to copy this whole button and paste it in. Well, otherwise, we want to follow. So we're going to pass the value of follow. And then here, I'm going to write follow. And then instead of danger, let's put success. Because uh, that's the green button, I think. Yeah, I don't know, green is good. So follow, red is bad, unfollow. Eh, I don't know, whatever, color these however you want. And so that should work. And that looks good. So let's come down here, I'm gonna add a line break underneath this just in case or later. And let's head back to the website and see how that looks. So now we could do this. And boom, unfollow at April. Now, I kind of like to have these as lowercase. So if we want to, we could come over here and add a little flag that says uh, lower, <laughs> right? Whatever. Do the same one here. So come back, hit reload. Boom, now it's lowercase. So, okay, cool. So now we click this, we're gonna get an error because we haven't set it up in our view to do this. Now let's play around with this first. Let's find one that, we can, we're not following yet. So if we click on Wes, now we follow Wes. What about Bob? And eh, we follow Bob. I guess we follow everybody. So <laughs> we can't mess around with that. Let's head back over to our admin section real quick and go to users and the admin and let's unfollow Bob. All right, now we come back and hit reload. It's green and it says follow Bob. Okay, so our logic seems to work. Now we just need to work on the back end part of this. So pretty simple, head back over to our views.py file and we want our profile view. And here we wanna make sure that the user is logged in. If you're not logged in, you shouldn't be following people because who are you? We don't know who you are to follow somebody if you're not logged in. So we gotta make sure they're logged in. So if the request, which is this guy, that user is authenticated as true, we wanna do some stuff. So First, we want to grab the profile. That's the same as before. But now we need to do some logic. So let's say post form logic. So let's say if request dot method equals post, that means they've clicked a button. If they haven't clicked a button, then the request method is get, and that just gets the web page. So that will just, you know, by default show our web page. But in the meantime, if they've posted, we want to do something else. So first let's get current user ID, right? So that's current, I'm gonna call this current underscore user underscore profile. And we wanna set that equal to the request dot user dot profile. Maybe not user ID, maybe just get the user. So if you're logged in, then you are making the request, right? Which gets passed in here, which then we can, you know, figure out who you are, which profile are you? And then we'll assign that to this variable. Now, next, let's get the form data. Now I'm gonna create a variable, I'm gonna call it action. And this is gonna be the request dot post. And now what are we grabbing? Well, we come back over here to our form and we called this name follow, right? So we want to grab follow, right? And we wanna assign whatever that is into action. Well, what is that gonna be? It's either gonna be the word unfollow or the word follow. So we could do some logic now based on that. So let's say decide to follow or unfollow. So here we could just use some basic logic. So we could say if action equals unfollow, we want to unfollow. So that would just be current underscore user underscore profile. That's this guy right here. That's, you know, you essentially. So let's say you dot follows dot remove, and then we could just pass in our profile. 
Now we know the profile is the primary key of whatever page we're on, right? So in this case, we're on Bob's page, Bob is number four, right? So that four gets passed into the page right here. We use that to look up Bob's profile. And now down here, we're saying, hey, remove Bob. And that's all we have to do, that's it. So let's go else, LF action equals follow. And we really don't need an L if in this line, we can really just say else, but I want to be very specific in the code just so it's easier for you guys to, to read. I mean, we could just say, you know, else and then do something because there's only going to be two options. If it's not this one, it has to be the other one, but I just want to be very explicit. So I'm going to say L if action equals follow just so it's easy to read. We can go current underscore user underscore profile dot follows dot add and then just pass in profile and that's it that's all we have to do now we have to save the profile now because we've added or removed something from our own profile so we need to save that and that's just current underscore user underscore profile dot save and that's it so that should do the trick let's go ahead and save this head back over to our website and hit reload and see if this worked Let's go ahead and try and follow Bob. When we do, boom, you see he's now followed by admin. And we've got this here. The button has switched to unfollow. If we don't want to follow Bob anymore, boom, we click it again. Hey, we've unfollowed it. Our name disappears from his list. Very cool. And just that easy. We can go over to April's profile. We can unfollow April. And now she is no longer followed by admin. She's only followed by Wes. If we click this again, boom, to follow her. She is now followed by admin because we've just followed her and we're good to go. Pretty simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.